What's up guys, Evil D here, and today I'm going to speak in English because it's actually really late here. I've got back really late, so I was going to do an Esperanto video blog, but my camera has 5% battery, and I'm like, oh crap, I better just pump something out, get it out in one go. Let's begin. So, last, lately, I've noticed a lot, especially from new learners of the language, that there is this prevailing idea that Esperanto is somehow sexist. Now, I can see where this idea has come from. It's come from the belief that because there is a suffix traditionally for the female, there should be one for the male or there should be none at all. And thus, since there's only the female one, it's somehow sexist. Now, I don't believe languages can be sexist. I believe people can be sexist, but I don't believe that languages in any fashion can be sexist. However, maybe I'm just blind to it, okay? Maybe I'm just like all the English speakers out there who don't see the usage of Esperanto. Maybe I just don't see sexism in the language because of some prevailing thing from, I don't know, maybe I'm somehow biased. It's a possibility, like, no one is non-biased to everything, so let's just assume I am biased, okay? So the best way to approach this is, if you really want to try and remove sexism from Esperanto, the language itself, I'm not talking people, but the language, then you have to obviously use whatever proposal you're talking about, rather than just jump into a group and say, everyone should use this proposal in order to get rid of sexism, that ain't gonna work, okay? A lot of people are gonna fight against you for many different reasons. Most of them are actually got nothing to do with sexism. It's actually to do with um, stability within the language, blah, blah, blah. You know, there's a million different reasons why people will fight against you. So if you really, really wanna use something like itchisma or new words for like mother and sister in order to remove perceived sexism, um, then all I can really say is just use those words and those proposals and those reforms and be prepared for the fact that a lot of people are going to have no clue what you're on about and you're just going to have to stop over and over and over and explain it. And then maybe one day down the track, enough people will see what you're doing is just or enough people won't. Like eventually it's either going to go one or the other. Like people are going to go, yeah, you're right and we should get rid of this perceived sexism or no actually there is no sexism you're under like a false belief system whatever it's gonna go one way or the other okay and if it goes down the route that a lot of people start to go hey you know what you're right there is something here that we didn't see before that the majority of us hasn't didn't see before then it's going to naturally evolve. More and more people are going to pick up on it and then it's going to become a thing. Because a lot of people are under this perception that, hey, this is a created language and I see sexism in this. Let's get rid of it. Um, everyone, stop doing what you are now and just get rid of this. It's not going to work, okay? Uh, for a million different reasons. One, it's an everyday language, it's being used, it's a living language. You can't change a language that's actually living and it has speakers because those speakers speak it in a certain way. And trying to convince a couple of million people around the world from all walks of life that the way that they've been speaking Esperanto all this time should change is a very hard thing. You try and get 10 people in the room at the same time and try to convince them to all walk out a certain door, someone's gonna go out that other door just to spite you. So, if you try truly believe there is sexism and you want to fix it rather than um, just complain, then actually do whatever it is you're talking about rather than trying to force it down everyone else's throat. It's the same thing with Esperanto. I, I had the same belief system. Rather than trying to convince the world that they should all learn Esperanto, I believe that it's probably best just to use it and present it to people in a manner. And when they go, what are you doing? Then you explain it to them rather than going, you should learn this language for blah, blah, blah reason. Because I believe that this language is the perfect secondary language that eventually it's just going to become it just due to that fact. It's like the um, like the numerals we use in English or all Western, actually all languages of the world nowadays. They're all based on the old Sanskrit through Arabic all the way into the Roman and then we use it now and they all replace the Roman numerals and there was a lot of people that were obviously against that, they had embedded interests and stuff but eventually it won out and I see Esperanto is the same way, eventually it's just going to win over and when I say win over I mean like it's going to become the secondary language. We don't want it to be the first language of the whole world anyway even though that might possibly become situation who knows down the track but I see it as eventually become the secondary language just due to its merit so if you believe that there's sexism in the language and you want to change that 
use whatever proposal that you're putting forward and if enough people see merit in it they will follow it it may take 50 years it may take longer but I'll just say one thing whatever proposal you use make sure it works with the current system it doesn't make anything um, contradictory because if you make it all work and mesh together correctly like mesh together um, so the two systems can work side by side whatever system you're using itch is small with new words or whatever just make sure it all works with the old system that way there can be a steady change over because it's not gonna happen overnight whatever you do it won't happen overnight um, even if you get like 80% of the Esperantists on board it's still not gonna happen overnight it's a slow process with any language. You look at any language reform in history and any point when it's been tried, when the government stepped in and gone, we're gonna do a forced reform, it's not gone good and it usually ends up with this mushed up, mixed up, you know, no one wins in the end type of situation. But if this is something that has merit and needs to happen eventually, then it will. Now, personally, I don't see sexism in the language. I don't see this as an issue. Um, I think it would be a nicety to have a male suffix that's identical to the female suffix, but eh, you know, it doesn't bother me that much. But maybe because that's because I'm male. Maybe I'm just inherently biased. I don't know. Maybe that's another issue. Maybe the fact that I think the majority of Esperantists are actual male speakers is another issue. But then again, like, just random fact. I look at my YouTube channel and 70% of my viewers are actually of male, of male, they are male, but the rest are females, so that's, you know, 30% of females, so maybe that's another issue, maybe as more and more females learn this language over time, that it will then correct itself. I don't know. This is just, I'm just throwing ideas out there, but basically the whole idea behind this random little video blog is just to say that if you believe there's any type of sexism in the language there's only one way it's going to be fixed and that's by you doing something about it and trying to put these proposals into effect um, I'm not going to fight against you I'm just putting this out there just because I've noticed a lot over time that people will jump in and then they'll get discouraged and they'll say well this is not the perfect language and then they'll go move on over to the next language well yeah there's no such thing as a perfect language to start with but if you've got that idea, you won't get anything fixed. <laughs> that definitely won't happen, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Uh, just random little thing though. A lot of people think, I just, I just this is just a little side note. People say that, you know, Esperanto is sexist because we have a suffix for a female but none for a male. And then they say that's sexist towards women because they have a distinguishing suffix. But couldn't it also be like seen as being sexist towards men because men don't get one like for instance a lot of people would say ino for a girl but then they'll say mal ino for a man so basically the man is built off of the female suffix rather than being in reverse just a random interesting thing i'm putting out there anyway if you've liked this video give it a like share it around with your friends um subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video and if you're not there well guess what I will kill you! <laughs> <laughs>